Hi everyone, I've recently just got back from a snowboarding trip in Switzerland. So in this video, I'm gonna go through basically what happened on the trip and some of the photos that I took on that trip too. Although quick disclaimer, this video doesn't actually feature any snowboarding. So snowboarding is a big, big, big passion of mine. I love it basically as much as I, I love photography, really. Um, so I do like to get in at least one snowboarding trip every year. Now, really, I couldn't really afford to do it this year, but I just it would make me so sad if I was to go the whole winter without doing any snowboarding whatsoever. And some things are just more important than money. So... I decided to go on this trip anyway. Um, it was it wasn't a really long trip. It was just for a long weekend with a friend. Um, so we went along to Ferbia in Switzerland, and it's it's a really big resort. It there's actually four valleys which form the whole resort. So four valleys which are all connected. So really big ski area. Um, I flew out from Edinburgh. Uh, my flight out was at 6.30 in the morning. So I drove up to Edinburgh the previous night and left my car with a, with a friend in Edinburgh. And my initial plan was to drive up that night, then go straight to the airport, try and get my head down for a couple of hours at the airport before my flight. What ended up happening was I met up with my friend after he finished work at 10 p.m. that evening. And he said, why don't you just come back to mine instead? So I thought, well, I'll be able to get my head down for a couple of hours at his. That'll be better than trying to sleep at the airport. But we ended up just chatting away until four o'clock in the morning when I then had to get the coach to the airport. So I got the coach to the airport. So I didn't get any sleep at all. Now, I can't sleep on coaches or planes. So, yeah, I didn't get any sleep on my friends. Um went to the airport, got the flight to Geneva, uh, then had like a couple of hours wait at Geneva airport, waiting on our transfer to take us to the ski resort. The transfer on the minibus was like a two and a half hour transfer as well. So eventually we got to, me and my friends got to the resort uh, later the following afternoon and the hope was to actually get some skiing, some snowboarding in that day as well, uh, which we did manage to do in the end. So we paid for half a day's pass, which was 60 francs. And in the end, by the time we arrived and things, um, we only actually managed about one and a half hours of snowboarding. Probably wasn't really worth the 60 francs, but um, we were keen to like get straight on it, especially because it was such a short trip. Now, the problem I had, of course, was that I hadn't slept for well over 24 hours. So I found that on that first afternoon snowboarding, I just could not snowboard at all. It was like I just completely forgot how to snowboard. I don't know if it was just because I hadn't slept and was tired or what, but... I just completely forgot how to snowboard. Couldn't do it. It was the worst I've snowboarded since I very first started snowboarding. And I was really, really tentative. I'd lost my confidence, was falling a lot. And I started to try and film uh, some footage with my action camera straight away. Uh, so I had my Sony action camera on a little selfie stick and started filming some footage with it. However, um, as, I, as I fell, I fell on one of the slopes. Uh, I fell on my backside and kind of slid down the slope a bit. And as I did, I lost the grip of my camera. Um, so I, I lost that. Thankfully, a ski instructor behind me picked it up and gave it to me. However, 
and the battery compartment on the camera has a lock on it and I can't have locked it because um, this, the battery compartment came open, the battery came out, um, so I lost the battery. But the worst thing was that uh, some, uh, as it slid down the slope and the, with the case being open, some moisture got inside the camera. Um, I've let it dry it out and as far as I can tell, the camera itself still works, but uh, the footage on the SD card became corrupt and I lost all that footage on the on the card, unfortunately. So, I mean, from that first day, it wouldn't have been great footage anyway, because like I said, I just completely forgot how to snowboard, couldn't do it. Let me get the nice little picture back. So I was left with a bit of audio from that first day only, and some footage that I recorded on my phone as well. So I'll, I'll put in some of the footage that I recorded on my phone. Okay, I've not slept in well over 24 hours, but I'm about to put in my first turn of the season. Let's go. Can't stop! I lost my camera. Ah, messy. Thank you. <laughs> messy. I've forgotten how to snowboard. <laughs> yeah, after that first day, it really knocked my confidence, and I thought I was really worried for the rest of the trip. And I thought, oh, this trip is going to be awful if this doesn't come back to me and I just lose all my confidence, this is going to be awful. And that's never happened to me with snowboarding. Usually, obviously, I'll try and get in whatever snowboarding I can do in the winter. Then obviously spring, summer comes and you're waiting uh, for the next winter to come around. And when you go away on that first trip on the first, uh, when winter comes around again, before you get in that first turn, it's like, can I still do this? Can I still remember how to do it? But then as soon as you get in your first turn, it's like riding a bike, it comes back to you and you get straight back on it. So that's the first time that it's happened to me where I just it didn't come back to me and I just couldn't do it. But thankfully, I guess it was just because I hadn't slept because thankfully after that, it did come back to me the second day and the other days after that were a lot, lot better. So the only other real mishap really was, uh, I think it was on the second day, second or third day, and we went down a, a black run which the black ones are the, the hardest of the ones. Uh, they're the steepest. And uh, we went down this black one and I, I, and I loved it. I flew down, down it. You get these moments sometimes where everything just flows and you just fly down the piece and everything just comes together and feels natural. And I had this coming down this black piece. So we got down to the bottom, went back up the chairlift again. And my mate said, okay, well, we can do this this different piece this time. And I said, nah, I want to do that again. I love that. I want to do that again. So we've done, we done the same one a second time. <laughs> uh, the second time out, it didn't go quite so well. Um, so the piece had a steep bit and then it uh, leveled out a little bit and then it had another steep bit and then it leveled out a little bit. So at the top of the second steep bit, I fell right at the top of it and I just slid down the whole of the, the steep bit. Now, usually when I fall on my snowboard, I tend to always fall on my back. So as I fall on my backside and then slide, I'll dig my snowboard into the ground to stop myself from continuing, just to stop myself from sliding. Um, usually that works. On this occasion, I was digging my snowboard into the snow to try and stop myself, but I just wasn't stopping and the more I dug my snowboard into the ground, the more all I was doing was just spraying snow into my face. So I was, I was still sliding, still sliding, and just spraying snow into my face. And it was actually quite scary because it got to the point where I was spraying so much snow into my face that I, I couldn't breathe at one point. Uh, thankfully, 
I got to the bottom of the, the steep bit and stopped just in time to catch my breath back. But it ended up completely covered in, in snow and took a silly little selfie. Slightly little scary moment, but other than that, all was good. One of the highlights of the trip was when we went to the, the highest peak in the resort. Uh, that was at 3,330 meters. It's the highest point you can get to. Uh, uh, we went to the top of there and the views were just fantastic. I didn't realize at the time, but it was after a while of being up there and I eventually realized, or, well, truthfully, my friend pointed out to me, my friend pointed out to me that uh, you could see you could see Mont Blanc in one direction in the distance and in the other direction you could see the Matterhorn, which I was really pleased about. I've always wanted to see and photograph the Matterhorn. Uh, I still want to do that because I'd like to see it and photograph it up close, but just to be able to see it at all uh, was really impressive. And that, that's just one thing I really, really enjoy about snowboarding. It's not just the fun of the actual snowboarding itself, but because I love being in the mountains and I just, as a photographer, I'm, I'm a real sucker for a good view. Uh, the views you get from the peaks being surrounded by such iconic mountains, uh, the Matterhorn on one side, the Mont Blanc on the other. I I just love it. It's, it's, what is it? It's good. <laughs> So I'm currently at the highest peak in the resort, 3,330 meters, and about to snowboard down that piece there, which looks very mowgly, so that's going to be difficult on a snowboard, but it should be fun, then it levels out a bit. And also, uh, over there is... Mont Blanc, and there's Mont Blanc, and right over there, right over there is the Matterhorn. So we spent a bit of time up there just admiring the views, obviously I got a few photos, so that was nice, and then there was only one, there's only one piece down from there which was a uh, black and uh, it was very very full of moguls though um, I do actually enjoy moguls um, most snowboarders tend to hate uh, basically moguls uh, where you get lots of bumps um, all all kind of like in a row so it's just like bump 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 uh, you see them on the Olympics um, so this black piece was just basically just all bumps all the way down most snowboarders hate them because they're very, very difficult. And they're difficult on skis, they're even more difficult on a snowboard. Because on a snowboard, you're always turning. Uh, now, when you have all those bumps all together, you don't have the space to, to turn your snowboard. So it's really, really difficult. Um, I, I really, really enjoy, enjoy them. I mean, I, I fall down constantly when I'm doing them. But I really, really enjoy the challenge and it's, it's just good fun. There are currently two snowboarders on this piece. Me and that guy down there. <laughs> and we're both struggling. In fact, every, <laughs> pretty much everyone's struggling, even the skiers. But yeah, snowboarders especially. Aside from that, in terms of the photography, um, I came away wishing that I'd got more photographs. I mean, it was difficult because it was only a short trip and I was with my friend as well. And I didn't want to hold my friend up too much by constantly stopping to take photos. Um, so I came away wishing I'd gotten more and wishing I'd done better. But as I've gone through the photos, I'm actually pleased with, with uh, some of the photos that I've got. What I am particularly pleased with is this panoramic that I took. Um, on top one of the on the top of one of the pieces, uh, and it made me realise that I really need to I need to do more panoramics. I don't actually do a lot of panoramas, and uh, I need to start doing more because I really really like this panorama that I took, because you do get such panoramic views uh, in the ski resorts on the mountain peaks. To be able to to capture that in a panorama, so you are getting more of a sense of the whole scale of the mountain range. 
and then to be able to zoom right in onto the piece below and the chairlift below uh, you can't get that in one shot you can't get that level of detail and that just that whole fast epic um, scale so I definitely need to start doing more panoramas and yeah I think that's my favorite my favorite shot from the whole trip I think that's pretty much it. I think that's all, everything I was going to share from the trip. Um, the only other standout highlight that I can think is worth is worth sharing is when I was flying back, uh, I had to change at Charles de Gaulle in Paris, which you might think is a bit of a pain given that Geneva to Edinburgh is only like two and a half hours anyway. So it kind of doubled the length of the trip. But it was actually kind of cool. Uh, I've never been to Paris before. And flying into Charles de Gaulle was actually really cool because you you fly so close over over Paris itself, and you could see really clearly uh, the Eiffel Tower, and the top of the Eiffel Tower has this big like beacon that just goes around the whole city, almost like a lighthouse. And just being able to see the Eiffel Tower for the first time from from uh, from a plane, and watching this light just fill the city as it goes around. I've, I've never seen such a, such a strong, powerful light. I mean, even when we flew further and further away, and we must have been miles away at this point, you could see it just filling the entire city. It, it was so impressive. Uh, so that was, that was cool. That was worth, it was worth changing that Charles de Gaulle just for that. But yeah, other than that, I do apologize that there's no that I don't have more interesting, exciting footage. I don't have any video of me actually snowboarding. Unfortunately, like I say, my SD card just became corrupt when I fell. Um, but I wanted to make this video anyway, just to kind of tell you my story, tell you what I've been up to, and show, share some of my photography from the trip. As you all know, I'm always looking for some sort of adventure whether it is snowboarding in the Swiss Alps or just something smaller and closer to home. Um, I'm always looking for some sort of adventure, so I just wanted to, to share this one. Um, if you do want to see more adventures, then please subscribe. And don't worry, in other videos, you do actually get to see the adventure, not just me talk about it. This video is an exception. But yeah, do please subscribe if you haven't already for more adventures. Hit that thumbs up. If you want to show me some support, hit that thumbs down. If you are annoyed that this thing keeps going off. Uh, but more importantly, actually, uh, just please leave a comment. That means more to me than anything else. It's engaging with people that I really, really enjoy and uh, really means a lot to me. To actually get to know the people who do watch my videos, I really, really enjoy that. And I also like to know what little adventures you've been up to as well, because that also inspires me. Uh, and on top of that as well, I just like meeting and getting to know like-minded people. Uh, so other people interested in photography, other people who just like to get out and enjoy the outdoors. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know enough people like that, annoyingly. So do please leave your comments. And other than that, Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. I don't know what that was. <laughs> Bye.